بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد If we had to conquer anything would be conquering ourselves Intrinsically human nature is we love victory whether it's on a micro level when we debate with people when we prove our point when it's between husband and wife we need to be right on a macro level whether we create world wars whether we destroy countries we need to prove a point we need to be right so this is a big idol so instead of fighting others fight the devil fight the idol in us fight the nafs in us because when a person has to be right then they'll want to compromise and have to compromise a lot to prove the point that you are right you have to deceive you have to lie sometimes you have to make sure people suffer all in the name of the truth but it's our truth it's not the real truth it's your perceived truth a a a, a fantasy world where a person believes that he is on the correct path and everybody else is incorrect so nabi alayhi salatu was salam came made efforts on the hearts of sahaba he could have broken the idols from the beginning all the external apparent idols but the biggest idol was the idol in the hearts when you break the idols inside automatically the idols outside break and collapse so that's why inna fatahna laka fatham mubina the conquest of makkah al mukarrama was not the real conquest this apparent manifest of victory manifestation of victory this ayah was regards to the treaty of hudaybiya and that was ulama explain that when sahaba were ready to sacrifice deen for deen one is sacrifice in dunya for deen but the ultimate tarbiyat and reformation is this heart is so aligned to allah and his rasul that you're going to have to sacrifice deen for deen let us understand this concept sahaba made effort for deen and they strove for deen and they sacrifice for deen so they were challenged now in a position where they were going to do one amal of deen and another amal of deen and now they had to make a call which amal of deen we need to sacrifice we allah make us maf in dunya in the position of dunya and we decide which of our deen we need to sacrifice for dunya So through the barakah Allah put khair in the treaty of Hudaybiyah where people started accepting Islam people started learning about deen laqad unzilat alayya ayah hiya ahab ilayya min ad-dunya jami'a such an ayah was revealed it is more beloved to me than the entire dunya nazalat surah fath and this was the surah fath even somebody asked the nabi of Allah Ma hadha bi fath They stopped us from the Baytullah this is not a conquest Nabi Ali Salam said bal huwa a'dham al futuh It's among the greatest of victories it's among the greatest of conquests So a person must learn not to compromise on the usuls of deen on the usuls of sharia stick to the awamir of Allah otherwise these illnesses and these idols creep into a person then a person starts compromising and when we compromise we compromise the entire system if you want to make change start with yourself start from the bottom up not on top downwards people are saying deen must come alive in the world so let's have a islamic government mashallah greatly needed but hukumat islami individually when the hearts want change then change will happen if we had to force change people rebel so if we want to change the world we must change our own world first 
Sometimes a person thinks that the other person needs to be changed and he needs his diet, he needs us here. So we hear a bayan and we hear something, say, hey, it would have been good this person was here listening to the bayan. So the bayan is for me, but I'm thinking about everybody else. So uh, there was a, a, a person passing by a, a, a village and uh, he uh, seen there was a need, he was a woodcutter and his saw was already on its last and the saw needed work to be done. So uh, this person went into the village, he looked for a blacksmith, he found the blacksmith shop and he said, can you fix this for me? So he said, no problem, I'll sort it for you, but you can come tomorrow. So carpenter said, you know what, I'll give you double the amount, what's the cost, but I need it urgently. He said, sorry, I cannot do that. Uh, it's not about the money, but if I need to make a tool, I'll make it perfect, 100%. I cannot compromise, so I'll give it to you tomorrow. So the carpenter insisted, but he seen this person is not giving in, so he said, okay, tomorrow. When he came the next day, he got his saw and he was very happy and impressed. He was so much impressed that he went uh, on his travel, he came across a merchant and he told him, you know what, I came across this uh, blacksmith and his skill was so much. So he asked, how much did you he charge? He said he charged me five dollars. So the merchant realized, hey, you know what, I can make a lot of money because this is a good quality saw and I can distribute it and I can open up a business and I can start a manufacturing plant. So he went to the blacksmith, he said, I'll give you $20 for your saw. So the blacksmith said, I cannot accept it. So he said, you know what, do you want more? I'll, 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 I'll increase the price. He said, no, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. I have a specific value in my mind for the work I am doing. Secondly is, you want me to work for you full time and you will, you will buy me out and I will work for you, but I'm satisfied working for myself. And I'm happy with the price I'm getting. So the merchant was more shocked. He said, you're a strange person, Ajib Admi here. Eh? You don't even want money. I'm going to give you double the price, triple the price. So the black merchant said, you will take the source from me. You will go to the city. You'll sell it to people that are in need of this money. And they're going to pay a premium. So I will make money. You'll make money. I cannot be a means for exploitation of these innocent people. And if I get lured in this trap, then people will suffer, prices will increase, the market standard will go higher and eventually they will suffer. So I can benefit, but I don't want them to suffer. And I'm happy with the price that I'm getting. I don't have an issue with it. So the merchant really understood the hikmah and the wisdom on the usuls and the principle that no matter what, I wasn't going to compromise my usuls, the idols inside. So we are in positions in life where you are that opportunity to make it or compromise. See, is your deen going to benefit or your dunya going to benefit? Is your deen going to be harmed or your dunya going to be harmed? At that point in time, we have to make a call. We have to decide. Dunya or deen? A person came to us at Muawiyah from Najran. He was around 200 years of age. Fasala wani dunya kefa wajidaha. So this elderly man was asked, "What was your experience of dunya?" So he said, "Years of bala and years of rakha, years of calamity and years of ease and comfort. Yom fa yom, walayla fa layla. The days and the nights pass rapidly. Yulad walad." That a, 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 a child is born, things happen, there's positivity, and those that cause destruction, Allah destroys them. If it wasn't the system here, then the creation would have been destroyed. And if it wasn't for Allah removing this people that cause disruption, then the world would have been a constrained place. So you'll have just rulers, you'll have oppressive rulers. It's a change in world. So Muawiyah told him radiallahu an, what do you want? Ask. 
My life has passed a one dead back. وَأَجَلْ حَضَرْ فَتَدْفَعُهُ And death has come. I want you to push back death. Increase my life. He said, لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكَ ذَلِكَ I don't have that capacity. So then he said, لَا هَاجَةَ لِي إِلَيْكَ If you cannot do that, then don't ask me what do I want. Meaning that whatever you're offering cannot be given. Because that's the biggest lesson of life. We offer everything but what's the real thing to be offered? Only Deen can find a solution in that. In, in, in dunya there is not complete solutions. That's why Bishr Hafi used to say, Man sa'ala Allah, that person who asks Allah dunya, فَإِنَّمَا يَسْأَلُهُ طُولَ الْوُقُوفِ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Whoever asks Allah dunya, they are asking to stand in front of Allah accountable on a day of Qiyamu. You increasing and you lengthen in your questioning and your interrogation. You got nothing, Saz audits you, they'll give you money. Say, Bishara, you got nothing, let's give you a refund. And on the contrary, audit carries on. First month, second month, first year, this year. We're doing an extended audit. We're doing a detailed audit. Goes on and on. Why there's so much to account for? So, um, this, this sickness, this internal sickness, I, me, is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Abu Azim used to say that, ما في الدنيا شيء يسرك إلا وقد ألزك إليه شيء يسرك That in this dunya, no matter what makes you happy, there will be something which makes you unhappy. So whatever pleasures and enjoyment you can get and what money you can have and whatever joys and thrills you like, there will be climax and an anti-climax. So don't bank everything on that. Hassan Basri used to say, Rahimallah, لا تخرج نفس ابن آدم من الدنيا إلا بحسرات ثلاث Your soul will leave you with three regrets. لم يشبع مما جمع Whatever you gathered and you can gather and whatever you can buy and whatever you want, it won't be enough. وَلَمْ يُدْرِكْ مَا أَمَلْ And whatever you hope for, you'll never reach your target. وَلَمْ يُحْسِنِ الزَّادِ لِمَا قَدِمَ إِلَيْهِ And whatever is coming in front of you after death, you'll realize you haven't had enough provisions. You have not prepared accordingly. So dunya is such that this, this heart is sensitive and we need to make effort on this heart. We've got so much flaws, we've got so much idols to destroy, but we are blind to that. We think so. On the trajectory a person is going where he is striving day in and day out for dunya and amassing wealth and, 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 and picking up certain traits in his heart, but he's blind of this here, he's oblivious. You see a person was driving on a highway when a policeman pulled him over and he was driving quite safe so the policeman was watching him so he, he had an incentive that whoever drives safely they will get an award so he pulled him off and said you know what the, the, the bad news and good news what do you want so he said uh, bad news he said bad news he said, there's no bad news I'm not sure to give you a fine he said what's the good news he said the good news is that you've got a thousand dollar safe driving award so he said, what are you going to spend it on? So the driver said that, uh, yeah, I think so, I deserve this prize and award. I'll have to really get the driver's license, which I've been wanting to get for a long time. Then his wife was there and she screamed, officer, don't take any notice, ignore him. Ignore him. He thinks he's too clever, but I think so, he's high. He's high. He's on, 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 on something. He's high. Then his friend in the back seat said that, you know what, I told you people, we wouldn't get far in a stolen car. We wouldn't get far in a stolen car. And uh, just then there was a knock in the trunk of the car and somebody in a muffled voice said, are we over the border yet? Have we crossed the border? Have we crossed the border? So, so much, so much, yet so much pride, so much arrogance.
So man is not ready to accept and uh, attest to his flaws. We live in this world of deception where we sugarcoat our, our flaws and we presume that uh, we've got it covered, but uh, in reality, we're very far from the reality. And then we use different fancy terminologies to justify our correctness. So they say, man is not foolish. He suffers from minimal cranial development. No, I'm just suffering from minimal cranial development. Somebody is lost. He say that he's not lost. He's just trying to, dis I'm trying to discover an alternative destination. Somebody is very dishonest. So he says, he's ethically disorientated. You don't say, no, dishonest, I'm dishonest. I'm ethically disorientated. Somebody is not short. He's anatomically compact. Somebody is not lazy. He's energetically declined. Somebody is not a psychopath. He's socially misaligned. Somebody is not going bald. He's in follicle regression. Somebody is not a cradle snatcher. He prefers generationally differential relationships. He's not unsophisticated. He's socially malformed. He's not impotent. He is procreationally disabled. He's not a quiet person. No, no, no. He's conversation he's a conversational minimalist a conversational minimalist somebody's weird you say no he's not weird he's behaviorally different he's not ignorant no 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 he's factually unencumbered when it comes to a lady also and she's old elderly you say no 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 she is chronologically gifted chronologically gifted woman is overweight so we hide again masks they say she's gravity enhanced somebody is overweight obese gravity enhanced somebody's cooking is not good she's microwave compatible microwave compatible because she doesn't cook everything easy microwave food a, a, a female who's hard and a difficult person they say she's horizontally accessible. Somebody who's got uh, rich parents and they support them, they say they are recipients of parental asset infusion. Not that you depend on people and you, you, you rely on them. No, 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 no. We give it a fancy name, fancy terms. A lady who's a bad driver. She's automotively challenged. Auto automotively challenged. Then a uh, woman who put on weight. So we don't say no that uh, she, she's putting on weight. No, 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 no. She is metabolically an underachiever. Metabolically an underachiever. So we, we hide, we cover up even in language. A woman is not too skinny. She's skeletally prominent. She's not a gossip, she specializes in speedy transmission of near factual information. She specializes in the speedy transmission of near factual information. How do we cover up? Women that go shopping a lot. No, no, she's not a shopaholic. She is an overly susceptible person to market employees. She's sus susceptible to market employees. Women are always getting late and delayed. So what we say, no, she's not late. She has rescheduled her arrival time. She has rescheduled her arrival time. And uh, no, 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 she's not a housewife. She's the minister of home affairs. Or she's a domestic engineer. When the kid's bedroom uh, is, is not clean in that, then what the child says, uh, my, my passage is restrictive. My passage is restrictive. A student who's in class and he's sleeping all the time, then what, what, do, what do they justify the student says? That uh, I am rationing my consciousness. I'm rationing my consciousness. Princi uh, principal called the student. So when he's going there, what, is, uh, what did he give a report? Oh, you went to the principal office. No, 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 no. 
I went on a mandatory field trip to the administrative building. If he has to be told that you're going to stay in detention and now you have to stay in, then uh, what does he say? I merely one of the on, on, on an exit delayed. I'm amongst those whose exit has been delayed. So this world of deception is such a deception that we don't know. We are in this deception. The amal for today is to learn ilm, ta'lamul ilm, engage in ilm, wal bahanu jihad. The dwelling in it is like jihad wa ta'alimahu liman la ya'lamu sadaqa. And to learn it and to teach it is sadaqa. Wa badlahu li ahlihi qurba. And giving it to those who deserve it is a means of proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the topic of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.